Welcome to ITTV for Form 4 Chemistry. Today's lesson, Analyzing Matter. We've already learned in Form 1, 2 and 3 about matter. We learned that everything on Earth is made up of matter. Let's go over this material once again because what we've learned, the basics of matter, we still apply in Form 4 and Form 5 chemistry. Let's begin by going through the different different things that we learned when we were back in Form 1, 2 and 3. Chemistry is about what things are made of, what their properties are and how they interact and change. That's the main thing about chemistry. So what we're going to be studying now is how all the different types of matter, solids, liquids and gases, interact with each other, chemically react, form new substances or how we take substances and split them apart to get different elements out of them for our own uses. On Earth, matter exists naturally in three states, solid, liquid and gas. Matter is made up of elements, a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Now, we're going to see that matter really is made up out of these atoms and molecules and compounds and also a new type of particle that we call ions. But I'll explain to you what ions are a bit later on in this lesson. Kinetic theory of matter states that all matter is made up of tiny discrete particles. The particles are in constant motion. As the temperature is increased, the particles move faster. Now, we learned this back in Form 1. If you remember, we learned about kinetic theory. We learned that all matter is made up of tiny discrete particles. Today, in this lesson, what we're going to do is have a look at what these particles are. We need to know the types of particles and when a substance contains which type of particle. Particles are in constant motion, also very important. But it's easy to say that the particles are in constant motion, but what we need to do is prove that these particles are in constant motion. In chemistry, and as in, in all science, if there is no proof, we cannot accept it as a given theory. So we're going to experimentally try to have a look and see if it is true that these particles are constantly in motion. And finally, as temperature increases, these particles are supposed to move faster. Well, once again, we need proof for this. And later on in this lesson, we will try to prove to ourselves that as the temperature increases, these particles move a little faster. Now, as in all science, we need to assess that we understand the basics as we move along. So let's try a few questions to see whether or not we understand the basics of what we've done and to recall some of the things that we learned in our lower secondary. Question 1. Which of the following is a form of matter? A. Heat B. Light C. Iron D. Electricity so remember what we're doing here is trying to recall what we learned in form one. Remember matter has volume, matter occupies space, matter has mass. Which of these four has all these properties? Have you made a selection? Let's see if we are both correct. The answer is C, iron. Let's try another question. Which of the following is not a form of matter? A. Air B. Sound C. Cloud D. Vapor Once again, you need to apply that basic idea. Matter must occupy space, must have a volume and must have a mass. Needs to be solid, liquid or gas. Which one of these selections is not a solid, liquid or gas? Have you made your selection? 
Let's have a look. The answer is B, sound. Let's move on to another question. Which of the following statements about matter is true? A. It can be weighed. B. It has volume. C. It can be a solid, liquid or gas. D. All of the above. So apply our knowledge once again of what we've learned about matter and try and make the correct selection. Let's check the answer. D. All of the above. So remember, matter must be able to be weighed. Matter must have a volume or occupy space. It can be a solid, a liquid or a gas. Now let's move on. We know that matter is made up of tiny discrete particles. There are three types of particles. Atoms, molecules, ions. Atoms are the smallest particle that can participate in a chemical reaction. Each element is made up of its own special atom. So the questions that we should be asking here are, how big is an atom? What is an atom? Well, the atom is the basic unit of all matter. How big an atom is, well, that's a bit more tricky. There used to be a famous experiment called Millikan's experiment in which we identified roughly how wide an atom is. Let's try and recreate Millikan's experiment here so that you get an idea about how matter is made up of atoms. What we're going to use is just a beaker full of water here and over here I've got a little bag full of some table tennis balls and a pair of scissors. Now, if you imagine that this bag is actually a drop of oil. So, if you take this drop of oil and put it into the water, like so, it will float on top of the water. And we know that oil floats on top of water. But the drop of oil is actually made up of a lot of atoms. And what we want to do is see these atoms come out. So, if we take this drop of oil and pick it up and actually cut it open like this and release all the atoms out from the drop of oil what we get is like this all the atoms that made up the drop of oil so what you have to imagine is the drop of oil had millions and billions of atoms inside it but if you break it open, it spreads out into a layer that is only one atom thick. So the drop of oil is big because it has a lot of atoms. But if you spread it out, it becomes only as thick as one atom. And also understand that matter, in this case the drop of oil, is made out of many, many atoms all joined together or all close together to form that liquid and then they sit on top of the water so how big is an atom very very small generally we say an atom is roughly about 10 to the power negative 9 which is nanometers in size examples of elements there are 118 different elements of these 118 different elements, about 90 or so are naturally occurring. The rest of these elements have been man-made over the last few decades. As we get better and better in the laboratory and get more high-tech equipment, we are able to actually fuse uh, protons, electrons and neutrons together or change an atom into another or a newer type of atom. Each atom of the 118 that we've mentioned is a type of element by itself. We have many, many different types of elements, such as if you look at your slide, we have carbon, or we have bromine, we have chlorine, or mercury. Please remember, each of these atoms, the chlorine atom and the mercury atom, 
are very different to each other. We have silicon or copper, uranium or krypton. All of these are different elements. And like I said, each element is totally different in terms of its atom. So let's just do a simple demonstration here for you to understand what we mean that each one is different. So what I've mentioned is we've got a lot of different atoms. Uh, we've got chlorine, carbon, silicon, copper, oxygen, magnesium, sodium, lithium. Remember there's 92 of them. And each atom is different. How they're different, we'll discuss later on. But understand that they're all different. If this is an atom of oxygen, well then, this is an atom of chlorine. They are slightly different to each other. If this is oxygen and this is chlorine, this could be sodium. Once again, it is different. This could be magnesium. This could be lithium. So understand that we have a lot of different atoms, 118 of them, but each atom is different from all the other atoms. Just like you are totally different from everybody else, you are unique, each atom is also unique. Molecules can be elements or compounds. Now, molecules, a bit tricky. Molecules are when at least two atoms have combined with each other. Now, when they combine with each other, there is a way of combining. They can combine so that they form elements or they can combine so that they form compounds. Now, before we go on, let's jump back to Form 1 once again. You learned in Form 1 that an element only has one type of atom. A compound is made up of two or more different types of atoms. So once again, let's go to these models here and sort of try and understand what we are talking about. So if we move these away, this is an atom. Let's say this is an atom of chlorine. Now when chlorine is forming itself in nature, chlorine exists as a molecule. So what you're going to see is not one chlorine, but two chlorine joined together. This is called a molecule of chlorine. It is an element because there's only one type of atom. They're both the same atoms. But there are more than one. So please understand the difference. This is an atom by itself. This is a molecule because there are two atoms that have chemically bonded together. Okay, because the two atoms are the same type, we refer to this as an element. But what if we got two atoms that are different joining together? Let's make an example of it. Let's say that we have one green combining with one purple, like so. Now, what I have is a compound. This has clearly got two different atoms. One green, one purple. Atoms are not the same. It is a molecule, yes, because two or more atoms have combined. But it is a compound because the atoms are different. So remember, this is an element because it's the same atoms. This is a compound because it has different atoms that have chemically combined. Now, if we have a look at this next slide, what we have here is a whole variety of elements and compounds. And let's look at them and try and identify them. The ones that are blue at the top, well, this is nitrogen. Nitrogen is an element because they're both the same type of atom. 
Just below it, you have a compound. If you look at this, it is carbon dioxide. You've got one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen that have combined. Two different types of atoms, element and compound. So if you look at all the other diagrams in the slide, you will understand the differences. We have elements where the atoms are the same and we have compounds where in the molecule the atoms are different to each other. Let's move on. Elements have only one type of atom. Elements are the simplest substances that can exist. The whole universe is made from about 90 different elements. So remember, we have a lot of different, different types of elements. Each element is made out of a unique atom. If an element only has one type of an atom, then the compound has more than one type of element. And in our universe, like we've said here, we've got about 90. This is what we know, okay? Uh, the ones that are man-made, well, you know, I can't say that they exist in the rest of the universe, but the chances are if they exist here on Earth, they probably do exist in the other parts of the universe. Now we want to move on to the next one, which is called an ion. Ions a positively or negatively charged particle. Negative ion is made when an atom gains an electron. Positive ion is made when an atom loses an electron. So this is the new particle. We know about atoms, we know about molecules, now what we're talking about is an atom that becomes charged. Now let's do a simple look at this, okay? I'll move these two away. If you imagine that an atom is something like this. This is the main part of the atom and around it, it's got electrons that are moving. This positive charge is balanced by the negative charges. If this atom loses this negative charge and it comes off. What happens is this is now positive. When an atom becomes positive, we call it an ion. So remember, when an atom loses an electron, which is negative, it becomes a positively charged ion. If an atom gets an electron, like so. Then what happens is, this atom becomes negatively charged. It's really a question of whether you lose an electron or whether you get an electron. So remember, if you lose an electron, you become positive. If you gain an electron, you become negative. When you get this positive and negative charges occurring, you get a structure forming. Let's just jump up to the board here and let me draw for you what's going to occur. So if you imagine that we have a positive charge, this is a positive ion, over here we have a negative ion. Now, if you remember back to your school in Form 1 and 2, you will know that we have positive and negative charges, and positive and negative charges attract each other through what is called electrostatic attraction. So what happens is, when you have a positive ion and you have a negative ion, these two ions are going to pull each other and they form what we call a lattice. L-A-T-T-I-C-E. I'll draw it first. So the positive and the negatives are going to attract. And what they form is a structure something like this. Positive. Followed by negative. 
followed by positive, followed by negative. Then you have your second row, negative, followed by positive, followed by negative, followed by positive. And then you get a compound being formed. This type of compound, because it is made from ions, we call it an ionic compound. Okay? So this is what we call an ionic compound. So remember, Ionic compounds are made from positive and negative ions when they combine with one another. So, a quick recap while we're here at the board. We've got ions. We also had atoms. So, let's quickly draw an atom up here. Atom, which is just one individual atom by itself. We have molecules. We have two types of molecules. If you remember, we have element molecules. Okay, so this is a molecule. They are the same type, so this is an element. Or we can have a compound. Where you have one type of atom, Combining with a different one. This is a compound. So remember what we have. Kinetic theory says matter is made up of tiny discrete particles. What are these particles? Number one, atoms. Number two, molecule which can either be an element, same type of atom, or a compound, different types of atoms. And finally, the new particle that we've just learned about, ions. The ions, positive and negative, combine like so to form what we call an ionic compound. So we have three types of particles that make up our matter. Structure made up of positive and negative ions. Electrostatic attraction. So remember back to your electrostatic attraction. Positive and negative ions combining and pulling each other like the ruler and paper experiment that we used to do. Let's try some questions now on what we've done and then analyze back what we've studied today. Compounds. A. Are composed of two or more atoms. B. Contain atoms that are all the same. C. Can easily be separated into their parts. D. Are composed of two or more elements. So what is the answer for compound? The answer is D are composed of two or more elements. The symbol hydrogen represents a hydrogen atom, P, a phosphorus atom, and O, an oxygen atom. The symbol H3PO4 represents a molecule of phosphoric acid. A, how many atoms of hydrogen are there in one molecule of phosphoric acid? Here you need to look at the formula. The formula will tell you how many atoms are in this compound. The answer is 3. How many atoms of oxygen are there in one molecule of phosphoric acid? Once again, you want to look at the formula. H3PO4. So this means that we have 4 atoms of oxygen. 
How many atoms are there all together in one molecule of phosphoric acid? Here, what we want to do is look at the formula and add up all the numbers that are there. We have three hydrogen, one phosphorus, and four oxygen atoms. So all together, we have eight atoms. So remember, everything is made out of atoms. And in chemistry, what we're going to find is we start to write chemical symbols to represent all these matter that we're going to deal with. This is just giving you a taste of what's going to come down the line and how much fun you're going to have with your chemistry. Diffusion. Particles in matter are in motion. This is the second statement in kinetic theory. The first one was everything is made out of tiny discrete particles. The second statement is particles are in constant motion. Kinetic theory must be proved Diffusion is the best way to prove kinetic theory. Second statement, which is particles are in motion. Diffusion proves that particles are in constant motion. Gas, the fastest. Solids, the slowest. Now, we're going to delve into diffusion in the next lesson. And in this next lesson, we will prove the second statement of kinetic theory. But for this lesson, let me just finish with the statement that we've experimented with and analyzed today. Statement 1 of Kinetic Theory. All matter is made out of tiny discrete particles. The tiny discrete particles are atoms, molecules or ions. Thank you for watching ITTV. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.